Do your sinks, showers, and toilets look like this? If so, then you probably have iron in your water. But getting rid of iron can be tricky, so I'm gonna tell you about the three types of iron you might be dealing with, and more importantly, the best ways to remove iron from your well water for good. So there are three types of iron you are most likely to find in your well. The first is called ferric iron, which means that it has already been oxidized to form solid visible particles. If your water is visibly brown or orange coming out of the tap, it's highly likely that ferric iron is present. It's essentially tiny flakes of rust floating in your water, which is why it causes the water to visibly change color. Next up is ferrous iron, which is sometimes also called clear water iron. Now, as you've probably guessed, this type of iron is dissolved, so it's not visible, and the water coming from your tap may look crystal clear. If you're seeing brown or orange stains on your laundry, sinks, toilets, and bathtubs, but the water coming from your tap is clear, you likely have ferrous iron in your water. What's happening here is that once the water comes out of the pipe and is exposed to oxygen in the air, it starts to oxidize to its ferric form and leaves those telltale brown or orange stains on the surfaces that it touches. Finally, let's talk about iron bacteria, an issue that is luckily less common but brings its own set of unique problems. Iron bacteria are microorganisms that feed on the iron in your water. They use the energy from converting ferrous to ferric iron to survive, creating a thick jelly-like sludge as they grow. This biofilm sludge can coat the inside of pipes and well pumping equipment, create an iridescent sheen on surfaces that it touches, and even cause the water to take on an unpleasant taste and smell. If you see a slimy reddish brown or yellow buildup inside your water tank, toilet tank or plumbing, it's a clear sign that iron bacteria might be present. And unfortunately, iron bacteria is the toughest form of iron to both remove and control. So the first step of treatment is to always determine the exact type and concentrations of contaminants present in the water. To quickly recap, you can look for a few visual cues that may indicate the type of iron you have. If the water coming out of your tap is reddish brown or orange, you may have ferric iron. But if it's coming out clear and you see reddish brown or orange stains on your toilet, sinks, clothes, or dishes, the iron is likely in its ferrous form. And if you notice slimy, gelatinous buildup that has an iridescent sheen around faucet aerators or in the toilet, it's likely bacterial iron. Now, this is a good start, but we also always recommend testing your water using a certified lab to determine the exact concentration of the iron present. TapScore is the best lab testing service that I've found provides the most comprehensive analysis, and I'll put a link in the description if you want to check it out, but you can also get your water tested with any local certified lab as well. Now that you're familiar with the different types of iron, it's time to tackle the real question, how do you actually get rid of it? It's important to remember that not all iron treatment products are designed to address every type of iron. And the best solution for your specific water problem depends on the type or types of iron that you're dealing with. So let's start with ferric iron because it's the most straightforward and it can be effectively addressed with a sediment filter. These filters work like a sieve, trapping iron particles and other sediment at the water point of entry to the home. The size of particles removed from the water is determined by the filter's micron rating, with smaller ratings removing smaller particles. Sediment filters are simple, inexpensive, and perfect for handling low to moderate levels of ferric iron. Just remember that they only capture solid particles, so they won't address dissolved ferrous iron. And to keep them effective, you'll need to regularly replace the cartridges. For higher levels of ferric iron, or a combination of ferric and ferrous iron, an oxidation filtration system is a reliable solution. These systems oxidize the iron and then use a specialized media like berm or manganese green sand to trap it in the filter bed. But it's also a great solution for filtering higher concentrations 
portions of already oxidized ferric iron. Next up, ferrous iron is a bit trickier to remove because it's dissolved in the water. And so like I just said, that means you have to oxidize it first, which is the process of converting it from its ferrous to ferric form, which can be more easily removed. An ion exchange water softener is a popular choice for tackling both water hardness and low levels of ferrous iron, both extremely common in well water. While water softeners are primarily intended to address minerals like calcium and magnesium, they can also handle up to about five milligrams per liter of iron. The resin beads in the softener exchange sodium ions for iron ions, effectively addressing ferrous iron in the water. And while water softeners are a convenient solution, especially if you're dealing with a hard water problem as well, it's important to note that they do have their limitations. They're most effective for water with lower levels of iron and water with a low pH. Once pH reaches neutral or higher, iron fouling of the softener resin becomes a concern. And it's also good to note that if you want to treat iron with a softener, you'll need to increase the unit's hardness setting by about three grains per gallon for each one milligram per liter of iron. This adjustment helps to compensate for the added iron load, which in turn means you'll have to add salt to the brine tank more frequently. An air injection oxidation or AIO system is another popular choice for removing ferrous iron. This system injects air into the water, converting dissolved ferrous iron into its solid ferric form. The oxidized iron is then filtered out using a media like manganese green sand. Some AIO systems can handle up to 15 milligrams per liter of iron, but again, efficacy is dependent on pH. This time, the system oxidizes iron better with a pH of 7.2 or higher. Plus, it's chemical free, which makes it a great option if you're looking for a more natural solution that won't affect water quality. If your water has over 15 milligrams per liter of ferrous iron or a lower pH, or if you're also dealing with a bacterial iron problem, then a chemical oxidation system is one of the most effective options available. Similar to an air injection system, this process also oxidizes iron, but instead of air, it uses chemicals, most commonly chlorine, to convert ferrous iron into its filterable form. And while chemical oxidation is highly effective, it's important to consider its potential drawbacks. Adding chemicals to your water can affect its taste and odor and create additional disinfection byproducts and interfere with or require additional water treatment equipment downstream. Additionally, chemical oxidation systems require a bit more monitoring and maintenance, including filling the chemical feed tank regularly. For lower levels of ferrous iron, around three to five milligrams per liter, a KDF filter is a simple and effective solution. KDF is a copper zinc alloy media that oxidizes dissolved iron and converts it into insoluble particles which are then trapped in the filter. For iron removal, you'll wanna look for a KDF 85 filter as it's specifically designed for iron. KDF filters are a cost-effective option, but they do require regular cartridge replacement. So if you have low levels of ferrous iron and are looking for a more straightforward solution, a KDF filter may be a good choice. Now let's look at the toughest iron issue to deal with, iron bacteria. This type of bacteria doesn't just cause clogging issues, it's also highly resilient, making it tough to remove. Physical removal is typically the first step in very infected wells. It's highly recommended to work with a licensed well contractor who will physically scrub to remove the biofilm buildup from inside both the well casing and the pumping equipment. The next step is to shock the well with chemicals to disinfect it. This process involves adding a high concentration of chlorine directly into your well, which will kill existing bacteria and help to prevent future growth. It's important to ensure that the chlorine solution flushes both through your well system as well as your home's plumbing for optimal effectiveness. So once the well has been disinfected, you may want to consider also installing a chemical oxidation system for ongoing protection. This is the same type of system I already talked about that's effective for higher concentrations of ferrous iron, but it can also be used to prevent bacteria growth. So the best iron removal solution for you depends on the type and concentration of iron in your water, 
your budget, and of course your personal preferences. For low to moderate concentrations of ferric iron, I recommend starting with a sediment filter, which is a simple and affordable option. If you're dealing with lower levels of ferrous iron and also have hard water with a lower pH, a water softener is an excellent choice. However, if your water has higher levels of ferrous or ferric iron, or a combination of both, or your water's pH is higher than 7.2, I'd suggest an air injection oxidation system. It's the most effective chemical-free method for oxidizing and removing both forms of iron. But for higher concentrations, or if you're facing iron bacteria, a more robust chemical oxidation system is your best bet. Now, I've installed and tested a number of iron reduction systems, so stick around and watch the next video to see how they performed. Click or tap to keep watching.